Hey guys, I'm Aaron, and today we're going to talk about tags, groups, and scenes. So this is something, we've made other videos that have touched on this topic. We, we talk about model organization on live streams on Fridays all the time. Um, but this specific question has come up a couple times in reference to actually Square One videos where we talk about basics. Uh, it, how do you go about organizing your model? Do you use groups versus tags? That was actually a specific question that was asked. Uh, and how do scenes work into that? And outliner? Question mark? <laughs> so uh, I wanted to take a look at how you might go about arra arranging a specific model. And this is not to be considered gospel. This is not the only way to do it. But uh, some suggestions when it comes to to organizing. Of course, everybody's ideal solution for organizing their model is going to be a little bit different because everybody needs something slightly different out of their model. So we want to look at how you can use the tools that are already in SketchUp, those tools being groups, tags, scenes primarily. A little bit, we'll talk a little tiny bit, we'll touch on uh, some uh, outliner, but those three things primarily and how you organize your model using those. So let's hop in. All right. So right here, I got a real simple model. So I got a little, I don't know, corner of a restaurant, something like that. You know, based on the wallpaper, it must be some kind of family style restaurant. That's not, that's not good looking wallpaper, but this is what we got. Uh, so just to point out, just let's run through this real quick. This room is in a group. Each of these items right down here are groups. Inside the groups, we have other geometry that's in groups or components. Um, I didn't use components a lot. The only thing really that is components are these chairs. Everything else is groups. I didn't want the, you know, the concept of components and repeating geometry and linking stuff together to have any effect on what we're going to actually look at. So the fact that the chairs are components and the plates are components really won't affect what we're looking at. We're just looking at the, the way the items are grouped. So let's touch base real quick on uh, why you would group things together. So here, obviously, Step number one, we want to group to isolate geometry. So I don't want my chairs connecting to the floor or whatever else, the tables to become one with the, the, the building. So I'm isolating geometry. So groups, absolutely going to get used for that sort of thing. This is one group. This is a separate group. That's going to happen. Now, uh, as I'm working through this model, if I want to get rid of something, this was kind of the question that was asked, I think is since I have all this stuff grouped, can't I just come in here and hide it, work on this, and then edit unhide later? Or, I mean, if you're a little more advanced or, 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 or practical, you might come in here and actually name your groups and then toggle them on and off uh, from here. What's, what's, the, uh, what's the advantage of doing that versus what I have set up here already, which is tags. So here you can see in here, um, I have my untag, my default with the pencil on it, just like it should be, not touching that. And then I have a folder here called tables. In the tables, I have a separate tag for settings, round tables and chairs, and then another tag here for room. And if I click this off room, room goes away. If I click off the folder tables, tables go away. If I click off individual things in here like the chairs, chairs go away. So what, what is the difference between the two? And I'm, I'm hoping at this point you guys have already seen it. I mean, that was obviously it was much easier to come in here and hit tags and turn something off rather than going through outline, which I love outliner. So it's not, I'm not dissing you outliner. Uh, going through outliner and finding, especially since they are groups, finding individual things to turn off rather than, uh, you know, just ticking something right here. Another thing, so I want, when I, I put these in specific groups like this, because as I move, as I lay out my dining room, I'm gonna wanna move all of these together, right? I don't wanna go select, 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 group, select, whatever to move. I just wanna click once and then move and I'm moving my, my table. That's what I need. So that's, that's, it's good that they're grouped together. But because they're grouped together like this, if I wanna turn chairs off, just chairs, and say, say my tags aren't set up, then what I got to do is go through Outliner and turn off each chair and then go into the next group and turn off each chair. So you can see I, this, this becomes 
not ideal pretty quick, right? So I have to turn stuff on and off as I go. This, it's okay for like one-off things, but if I wanna make a big impact and just like, just with a click as I'm working through here, turn stuff on and off, man, it's really hard to beat having things in tags because you can apply a tag to something regardless of what group or component it's in, right? Because I can put this chairs tag on this chair in this group and this chair in this group. So that's kind of where tags come in. The other thing to think about with tags is tags can be accessed directly from layout. So when you take this over to layout, you can actually control that. What you can't do in layout is toggle individual items on and off. I don't have an outliner over there. I don't have hide. Uh, so the only way I could do that is if something is hidden and tied to a scene. I can't individually go make those changes, but I can flip tags on and off once I get to layout. So if you are generating any kind of output, tags are a no brainer. You just, you gotta use them. But that does bring us to scenes. So I created some scenes here, one, two, three, four, five scenes. Uh, and if I look at these scenes over here, I'll just click through them real quick. So I have this one that's just the room, hides all my, all my place settings, all my tables, furniture only. I got rid of all the stuff on top. Uh, and then I have this west tables and east tables. So I'm gonna go back to all on. These specific scenes, if I expand my scenes dialog, you can see that each of these have only hidden objects and visible tags turned on. So as I click through these, uh, it's not gonna change like my camera as I go through like this. See that? It's all it's gonna do is change what's visible. And because I have both tags and hidden objects, that's when I do something like this. So that turned off these two tables because they became hidden. So if I go to view, show my hidden geometry, uh, oops, no, not hidden geometry, hidden objects, I'll be able to see there's those two tables that are hidden. Same thing over here. There's those two things that are hidden. Um, this is nice. Scenes is amazing for making these working working scenes. I mean, these, this isn't even for final output or anything like that. It's not like I'm necessarily going to be using that because the camera's not there. It's just changing what's visible on the screen. So this is another thing and scenes are available to layout. So I can actually flip to this from layout, which will automatically hide and unhide or turn tags on and off based on that when I get into layout. So that's also useful. Scenes, setting these things up for scenes are views you're gonna regularly want to go in and look at. So I know this is this is kind of a simple example, but you can kind of get the idea that maybe there's masses of information or geometry that you're gonna to wanna to hide on a regular basis as you work through a model and turning them on or off and saving that to the scene is a great way to just flip between it quickly. Look at this, I mean, this is one click and I'm toggling half the model on and off. Great way to do it. So just a quick recap, grouping, you got to group to just isolate geometry, but you're also going to group based on ways you may want to turn things on and off or hide. Ideally though, you want to tie visibility to tags. It's going to be the quickest, easiest way. You can hide things. Yes, absolutely. But if you want to turn items on and off quickly, definitely keep an eye out on tags. And as you find yourself changing those visibilities on a regular basis, you may want to create a scene and not just a scene, but a scene with only visibility options in there. That's going to make it just, just a lot easier to jump around and change your view as you're working your way through a model. So I hope that answered the question or addressed, addressed the question uh, that was asked several times on the forum. Uh, there's again, I, I'm not saying that you know, I did not want to put this forward as this is the only way to do it. If you have a way that works for you using visibility or using hidden, I mean, hidden kind of gets bashed a little bit. Oh, never hide geometry. I'm okay with hiding geometry. The problem with hiding geometry is unless you're really, really focused and you really do a good job of organizing outliner and you keep it open all the time, it can get hard and it's easy to lose track of hidden geometry because it's hidden. Uh, but something like this, a combination of groups, tags, scenes is the ideal way to set up your model so that it's easy to navigate, easy to flip on and off, and it's gonna save you time and energy in the long run. I uh, hope you like that video. If so, click like down below. And if you haven't already, 
please do subscribe. We create several videos each and every week and you'll be notified of all of them if you subscribe. Most importantly though, please leave us a comment down below. We love making these videos. We like them even more when they're showing something you wanna see. Thank you.